Well, it's all hands on deck on Bohemia today. We're about to set off on what could be the most difficult passage of our cruising so far. You might remember us complaining in the last few videos about the lack of wind on this part of the Mexican coast. I mean, are we on the lake or what's going on? <laughs> this is insane. And the reason that there's been no wind in the last few hundred miles is because it all funnels through this next spot that we have to cross. And uh, it's chaos there. It's called the Gulf of Tehuantepec and it's a low patch of the mountains uh, that bridge the gap uh, between the Caribbean and the Pacific coasts of Mexico. So the name of the game is just to get in, get out as quickly as possible and not mess around in between. You need to get a two day or three day weather window uh, where the winds just stop blowing. The window that we have is a little bit on the short side of that. We have about a day and a half where they're forecast to be quite light but still quite gusty. So we're not gonna have no wind, we should be able to sail. And as a mitigation uh, for the fact that we are gonna have some wind, uh, we're gonna sail super close to the beach. This strategy is called the one foot on the beach strategy. So we're gonna be probably under a mile away from the beach the whole way. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit stressful in terms of navigating this passage. This isthmus and this area has already claimed more than its fair share of boats and uh, the name strikes fear into the hearts of uh, southern Mexico and Central America sailors. We have been preparing the boat like crazy. Uh, I've lashed down everything heavy in the lazarette just in case we get super strong gusts and the forecast doesn't pan out the way we expected it. Uh, I've lashed down our solar panels uh, on the Bimini. That's definitely a weak spot if we're going to get strong gusts of wind uh, on the beam, which is kind of what we're expecting uh, if the wind does blow on this passage. And everything that can be tied or battened down for this passage will be. It's a really stressful one for the captain. Uh, there's a lot of pressure and this passage coming up, I'm getting sleepless nights over it. So I'll actually be quite glad to be underway and hopefully in calm seas so we can get this past us. The first mate has been really busy down below as well. He's prepared all the meals for this passage in advance and he's also made us a new red ensign to fly off the back of our boat. Uh, as we're looking to cross some international borders very, very soon, uh, this will come into its own. Here we are, our new red ensign. It's not bad at all, isn't it? I just hope that the Queen is not watching. I don't think she would approve. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Not bad, huh? Like everything else on Bohemia, it's best admired from a safe distance. <laughs> and yeah. not, not in HD, if, if at all possible. <laughs> Don't want to see the stitching. <laughs> Let's just hope it's up to the Tehuantepec winds. That'll be his first test. We are only a quarter mile away from the marina and got about 12 knots of wind and the swell is picking up so I've already issued a first verbal warning to the captain that if it's gonna get any worse than this we are returning didn't go down that well let me tell you bad news for the first mate I'm afraid I've just watched it climb from 10 knots to 12 knots of wind so uh, I think we might just be out for half an hour to scrub the bottom and then back into our comfortable slip again at this rate We've waited for what we think is a good window, but unfortunately this is the worst time of the year to be doing this passage, so I don't think it's going to get much better, and let's just hope it's a little bit better than forecast. We're going to drop the hook in a bay nearby and just jump in the water, scrub the bottom, and get rid of any barnacles that might have grown while we've been sitting still in the marina, and uh, then take off into the night. Well, we've done 10 minutes. My lunch is somewhere up here. <laughs> So I'm not quite sure how these 52 hours are going to be like. Well, the, the waves and the swell that we're getting here are all wrapping around this point uh, from the, uh, the terrifying Tehuantepec, which are blowing full force right now. And our window is going to open up, we hope, uh, tomorrow morning. So we're just positioning ourselves for it just at the right moment. Let's see that this bottom cleaning is going to sort me out. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going down below. I'm going to lay down and go off sick. I may not have any other choice. On full pay, obviously, because, you know, first mates for justice have fought really hard to get full benefits. <laughs> 
Is that what they were doing all that time with their feet up in the cockpit? Working hard, apparently. On your behalf, first mates. Don't believe a word of it. He's just a jumped up t-shirt peddler. <laughs> with the union, though. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> I knew unionizing Bohemia would be a mistake. Well, 20 minutes later, we've arrived and it's time to get to work. We haven't cleaned the bottom now for about two months. So this is going to be interesting. It's going to be really dirty. So we definitely need to do it before this 250 mile passage. It's lovely down there. It's the first time we've had an audience come to watch us scrub the bottom. <laughs> and uh, the puffer fish was so cute. I love puffer fish anyway, but watching them just nibble on the barnacles, priceless. And look who's coming. SV Boundless is joining us. You may remember Boundless. We helped uh, Julian to haul out his boat back in Puerto Vallarta. So is this a sailboat? This is a sailboat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first clue is this, the white pointy thing that goes up there. They're going to cross the tone to fix with us. Mind how you anchor. Well, I don't know where they learned how to anchor, but that's a bit close, isn't it? San Francisco people, eh? Where do you think you are, the men? It's like Mediterranean here, Costa Brava. So nice to have neighbours again, and we only just left the marina. <laughs> We've got about a slip distance between us. <laughs> We're waiting for the right time to set off, have a little movie night, and uh, nine o'clock has come. It's time to go. This is uh, really nerve-wracking. This sail. It's probably the hardest that we've ever done um, and I think it's because we're expecting it to be nasty <laughs> and this has such a fearsome reputation we're expecting a really tight window and some really challenging sailing we got to sail so close uncomfortably close to the beach uh, and to the land to make this uh, quote unquote safe so there's gonna be no relaxing for the whole 250 miles uh, let's get this over with I'm pretty relaxed <laughs> My bed is made. <laughs> He's reporting for the next 48 hour on shift. <laughs> Engine is finally off, one hour later, and we have a good nine knots of wind. First mate has gone down below to get some beauty sleep, so he can take over from me. And uh, we're about an hour into the sail, and the seas are building a little bit. We've definitely got some head seas uh, that we're, we're punching through, uh, but not a single slam of the hull yet, so that's pretty good in our boat. Uh, it's pretty comfortable so far, just a little bit bouncy. 
it's 2 a.m. and it's my shift and I don't want to jinx it but so far actually the conditions are great there is some swell but it's nothing terrible um, better condition that we could ask for oh dear me my eyes well the captain's back on watch and the sails are back out of course uh, this is the leg of the passage that I was most afraid of and so far so good it really doesn't seem to be shaping up uh, to be anything too scary uh, the conditions that we've got are just perfect the sea is flat and we've got a wind on the nose of about 12 knots apparent so really very light conditions here uh, there seems to be some fire on the horizon I think it's a big oil refinery in Salina Cruz but it just adds to the whole like fearsome reputation of the uh, of the area it feels like we're sailing into some Lord of the Rings volcano Mount Doom on the horizon uh, just a faint glow of, uh, of amber over there. We've got a great wind angle right now, so we're going to use that to really push up north uh, towards the beach and hug that for dear life, just in case the winds return later on. Red sky in the morning. Sailor's warning. Well, this is turning into an absolutely gorgeous sail. I uh, killed the engine about half an hour ago. We were just pinching and pushing up into the uh, edge of the bay and uh, the wind finally came round, so engine off. And uh, we've got 16 knots of wind, apparent, and we're making nearly five knots of speed. We'll be on the beach before you know it. Far of the barbie. Well, you know what that means. Boundless is 0.8 of a mile ahead of us, just teasing us with their progress. Uh, they're a 43 footer, or 42 footer, and uh, we're a 36 footer, but we got the weight advantage. And uh, this can only mean one thing the race is on. We've got to overtake them. is building to 25 knots gust. Uh, we're still on the upwind leg of the uh, the race uh, so I don't want to reef the jib yet um, but I may have no choice soon. Uh, once I furl the uh, the jib then it's going to ruin our upwind performance so I'm kind of loath to do that. And the good news is we're very very slowly inching our way up on Boundless. Just heard a little inquisitive voice when I was talking to Boundless on the radio. And look who it is. I just want to know when the healing will stop. That's all I want to know. Stop. I'm quite uncomfortable down here in bed. Nice of you to join us. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. Meanwhile, up on deck, the race continues. There they are. I knew we'd catch them. Julian just radioed to say that he's depowered the main so that we can catch him up on the condition that I don't tell everyone on our video that we beat them in the race. So there you go, the message got through. I didn't claim victory just yet, but the day is young. What's going on in here? Whew. To be healy, I have to <laughs> say, can't even make the morning coffee. How much longer of this? I knew the galley would be on strike for some reason. Today it's the healing. But this is going so much better than our anticipated put. It's actually not terrible at all. I expected huge swell. It's just the wind and we are flying forward beautifully.
good news and bad news to report. The good news is that we are through the worst of the Tehuantepec Isthmus. We're out of the funnel and out of most of the danger zone. Famous last words, of course. Uh, the bad news is that unfortunately we're not expecting any more wind uh, of any significant strength and we have uh, 150 miles to go uh, before we get into the next port. So this expanse of coast is just vast and empty. There's nowhere to really stop on the way uh, and we're just going to carry on going. The motor is probably going to be running for another 30 hours before we get there. It's 6.30 in the morning, we are still motoring. We've been on the way for about 40 hours now. Uh, literally, there has not been any wind for the last 15 hours. So uh, this is definitely one of our longest motoring passage ever. It's been quite challenging to have the engine on for so long. But we are arriving in Puerto Chiapas today, probably around 10 p.m., so cannot wait. The concert is over. It didn't last long, did it? Thank you very much. I'm selling CDs in the parking lot. Ten dollar. Don't buy. But at least the captain's got the entertainment sorted. I'm tuning my voice. Ah! <laughs> I have a voice of a castrati. <laughs> <laughs> Keep tuning. <laughs> Well, I gotta say it hasn't been either of our favorite passages so far, but hopefully it's ending with a bang. We got the spinnaker out and we are currently motor spinnakering, which is a little bit new to us, but it's, uh, well, we just got the engine running basically because we can't wait to be there. And uh, if this takes an hour and a half of our arrival time, which is currently set to, then so much the better. Uh, the first mate has actually gone on strike officially and given up uh, responding to any sail adjustment or sail trimming commands from the captain uh, unless the captain can guarantee uh, that that spinnaker or the sail will be flying uninterrupted for the next two hours so he doesn't have to get up again from his book. Too hot to work. Too hot to work. I've got my personal cooling system right here. <laughs> I'm actually blowing the wind into the spinnaker. <laughs> well, you know what they say, you want a job done, <laughs> do it yourself. Special thanks in this episode go to our latest patron, Scott from Massachusetts, who sails his bayliner in Cape Cod and Buzzards Bay. Scott, thank you so much, and here's to you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh god, that's El Strongo. I've got a flamingo in my eye. <laughs> First <laughs> mate for justice! First mate for justice! First mate for justice! Second mate for justice! I'm out! The Bohemia store is now opening its arms to oppressed first and second mates everywhere. Check it out at store.sailingbohemia.com Where's a sudden gust of wind when you need one? <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, then please tell YouTube all about it by subscribing to the channel, commenting, liking, and sharing. See you next time.